my people to thief noise you. If you see thief, respect them, especially the ones who are successful, to thief noisy. You see this election where they rig, this mandate where they steal from us, he noisy. They try, they touch the result, they manipulate and they do and they do and they come confused. Last, last. Now Abuja where will be for win all the polling units for Abuja. Abuja and I will give the problem. They never bond that judge. We will spoil our case. We could not hear the way this son is saying they explain everything. They are in serious trouble. A very bad victory that they give a Milokon. Very bad one. Your black said they just punch and say, oh, Yeah, take now, go defend yourself for court. I don't know how they want to look, how they want to do But trust me, it's not easy to thief, especially when you are thief, when you are, when you are, when you are thief the victory of over 200 million Nigerians. Please watch this video. Share and make your words here. Drop your comments. Like her so that make Facebook rebroadcast and give many people. So that make a make obedience, make a no say. Our victory, we will reclaim her. Watch this video, make you learn something. Of last weekend's controversial presidential election played out, an argument or a debate, if you like, popped up at some point regarding the status of Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory in the wider scheme of things. All of a sudden, people started talking about victory in the territory as the sole prerequisite for being declared winner of the contest and duly elected president of Nigeria. Former Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Michael Aondoka, has now joined us to shed more light on this matter, as well as other matters arising from the polity at this time. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on Newsday. Welcome. Now there were fears. Yeah. Now, there were fears of a constitutional crisis as the 2023 presidential election results began trickling in, with some analysts saying the winner must win 25% of valid votes in at least 24 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. In fact, some thought, you know, winning 25% of the votes in the Federal Capital Territory would be the deciding factor in who wins the election. Well, the president elect clearly did not get 25% of the votes in the FCT. So is this a good enough ground to question the validity of the results? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very difficult situation. But I think the matter has been interpreted before around 2008 in a matter involving the current president, Buhari, when he fired an action. The issue of whether that uh, and in between, that is, must have 25% uh, in two states and the federal capital territory. I think the pronouncement then was that the and is conjunctively. That was the interpretation then. But you know it's about 14 years ago. Uh, it's enough time maybe. The Supreme Court may have another look on it. But as of now, that is the interpretation the Supreme Court gave in 2008. I don't want to go into details because the matter is now subsidized about some states have already filed an action to challenge the legality of the election. So I'm confining myself to what was the interpretation of the Supreme Court in between in Buhari's case in 2008. Okay, just the interpretation simply was that... Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to get to some clarification. Have, which I'm sure is what you're saying right now. So please proceed. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. I'm saying I cannot go deep into the matter because already actions have been fired at the Supreme Court. And I'm just giving you an instance where there was an interpretation by the Supreme Court of that provision or a similar provision. The interpretation was that that and federal capital should be construed conjunctively. In other words, it means you must get the 24, the two days, the 25 percent in two days, and also you must get 25 percent in the federal capital territory. If you go by the 
interpretation of the Supreme Court in 2008. But I say, look, the Supreme Court have a right to depart from its previous decisions. If the justice of the case demands so. So I don't know if they are confronted with similar interpretation, they will follow their own previous decision or they might depart from their previous decisions. That's why I gave you that answer. But I will not go further because the matter is before the Supreme Court and six states have already gone to court to have the election voided. Now, of course, the two political parties, PDP and Labour Party also, have commenced legal actions at the presidential tribunal, which is the Court of Appeal. So it will not be proper for me to go deep into the matter. And that is why I didn't even cite the citation, but it's a case I'm very sure was decided in 2008. It involved the current president and a clear interpretation was given on that. All right, fair enough. Thank you. Fair enough. Uh, thank you for uh, expounding on that and explaining it a little further. It seems that uh, it's a war of semantics in more than one case, uh, not only with the and or federal capital territory, but the words now are transfer versus transmit. Um, and I'm speaking about IREV and BVAS, uh, transmission versus transfer. A uh, few days back, uh, Senate uh, President uh, Ahmed Lawan, well, he said at plenary that the National Assembly only made provisions for the transfer of results from polling units to the INEC server. Now, this is contrary to the uh, narrative that uh, INEC has been selling on uh, advertisements all over multiple television screens and even in newspapers, telling the country about real-time transmission of results that can be seen by all in order to create transparency. This particular sticking point, will this, uh, is this another credible angle that uh, some or more of the parties might use to argue their case? Certainly, it's going to be an issue because the position of the Supreme Court then and now are guidelines flowing from INEC <coughs> have constitutional flavor. The guidelines flowing from INEC in the conduct of elections have constitutional flavor. Even in party politics, the Supreme Court has retaliated that Party guidelines also ought to be obeyed. So how much <laughs> with, not to talk of INA guidelines, which flow directly from the Constitution, because they get the powers to enact, to, to issue out guidelines based on the power donated to INA to conduct the election by the Constitution. If they have consistently issued guidelines, alluding to the fact that the result will be transmitted live from the polling unit. Not just here, all over, even at Chatham House, it will be a serious issue. They will have good reasons to tell the Supreme Court or to the uh, presidential tribunal why they deviated from that character. And they must also justify deviating from that guideline did not affect substantially the result of the election. But it's going to be an issue, not just an ordinary issue, but a very serious issue. Because the issue of uh, others feeling that it has been, they have been misled, others feeling that there's an uh, improper motive behind the sudden change, because if you, are to, if you have issued guidelines to the effect that results will be transmitted directly from the pooling unit, and it becomes impossible, you have to also issue guidelines countering that, varying the reasons why. But it does appear in this case that you are changing the goal, the, the goal, the poke, the goal post in the middle of the game. That would be a little difficult to explain. But I've said, these matters are before the court, and the court, Nigerian judiciary is courageous, very courageous enough 
to see whether that sudden change without notice created issues of transparency on the election. That will be a very great question to ask. The big question is why did you keep drumming on that issue? They may have a reason, but until that reason is adduced, if at the trial and it becomes public, if not, the presumption will be obvious that something not right happened. Not right in favor of Eidnick or not right in, the, uh, <laughs> in favor of the parties. Maybe Eidnick have a reason why they suddenly do, did that in the middle of the election. But I've said not transfer, transmitting the result as alluded by them consistently will be a serious issue. Thank you. That six states have petitioned the Supreme Court to nullify the outcome of the presidential election. But I'd like to know if it should be the states, you know, making such petitions. If I might borrow your legal term, do they have the what? locus standi to do that? If you follow the recent judgment or the sh Supreme Court by Naira redesignation by CBN, with approval of the problem. In one of the clauses, the, the judges of the Supreme Court, in their wisdom, said there's a known principle. CBN has a known principle, which is the president. And the conduct of election vested in INEC is also the duty of the federal government to ensure elections are transparently conducted. If you follow that judgment, which was just delivered today, it will be difficult to say the state don't have jurisdiction. Because they also have stakeholders. And they also were aware that for the protection of their citizens, they were aware that INA gave assurance that results will be transmitted from the polling units. Just like in the matter, relating to the Naira issue, there's sufficient interest alluded. In Naira issue, the state governors in their wisdom and correctly to went to court to protect their people. They fed the policy, created hardship and was unjust on them. And Supreme Court said they have a right. How much the issue of leadership? Who governs this country must be a, a matter of all the federation state. It must be a matter of contents to everybody. And everybody, I think that is an area that we will wait to see uh, whether they have jurisdiction. The rights, I have not read the claims sufficiently to me to make comments, and then even if I read sufficiently, I will not make comments because the matter is before the court. I am only commenting on the fact that the recent judgment seemed to create a window for states to do the data party. Okay, um, all right, uh, thank you for that. Concerning the uh, judiciary, it's, uh, it, it seems like this is their high season, so to speak. Um, with the conduct of the elections uh, the week before and obviously not this weekend, but the upper weekend. Um, do you foresee a lot of court uh, back and forths, people running to the court in order to get their, um, to get justice in one sake or another? And do you see the judiciary as, see, as being overburdened? It, would this, does this worry you that there might be a, quite a lot of back and forths? And is it possible for in this particular case um, with the presidency and the six states um, going to the Supreme Court, in a similar vein, could the parties link up together to join a clash action suit? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm trying to find the, uh, the right terms in order for you to understand what I'm saying. In order for them to join together to sue the government, is that a possibility for them to do? Well, let's first let me answer you. The judiciary has been unfairly 
overburdened because every single election, pre-election matter went to the Supreme Court. And when the judges in their wisdom followed the law, some tried to infer morality. I'll give you one example, the case of the Senate president. There has been laid down procedure and precedent by the Supreme Court. The issues of forgery or falsification, which are criminal in nature, requires reasonable doubt, even in civil proceedings. And therefore, where a matter is commenced in such a way that the standard of proof is beyond reasonable doubt because the criminal elements there requires the other party to arm it. And it is commenced in such a way that such proof cannot be. Morality will be otherwise, but the Supreme Court must have followed the law to say, look, you did not commence this matter in a proper manner. It ought to have come by writ of summary instead of originating summons. But coming to the current situations, individual people who are affected, the Constitution gives them the right to challenge an action where they are an aspirant. But at the same time, I am saying you, don't forget that before governors took the Naira issue to the Supreme Court, individuals who felt aggrieved went to the Federal High Court, one in Kano, one in Akwaibum, one in uh, Oka, to challenge the action of the governor. Some did and lost. But the governor still went to the Supreme Court in a collective form to protect the rights of their citizens residing within them who do fate have suffering. So I believe that is the premise which some of the state governors have gone to court. Ordinary, it would have been those who are aspirant. But the action is not premised on the electoral act, but it's premised on the constitutional provision that I make this is the powers, these are the regulations you made flowing from the constitutional provision giving you power to conduct relations. This is what you said and you have done the opposite, you have violated the constitution. That is the scenario where that is playing up here. For a person challenging an action in court, relating to an action, a, a election, he must be an aspirant. But here is another angle where I exercise his powers and wrote out guidelines which have constitutional power. That's what the Supreme Court said. And I make now deliberately or by omission did not follow the guidelines. Then the states could have felt that their people are surcharged and have a right to approach the Supreme Court to give the interpretation. I think that is what is playing out here. But at the same time, I told you, I cannot go into the details of this because actions have already gone to court and we wait. But I have the highest confidence in the Nigerian judiciary, especially the Supreme Court, because they do not decide based on sentiment. It's not always what is law that morality will be. It's what the law sometimes do not come out the way you, a clergyman or an ordinary person, will look at it. But if Supreme Court decide otherwise in a certain manner, it will be overrun itself on several cases that will distort the doctrine of precedent. So that is that. Well, so I still maintain that. that it does appear the governors have seen the window in the last case just decided today. In fact, they also have a right to collectively, six of them, challenge the conduct of this election, hinging on the constitutional powers I make of abuse, allegedly abused. Well, talking about the case that was decided so, today, that of the Naira redesign, some people are of the opinion that the ruling creates more problems than solutions, especially when you consider the hardship and suffering that Nigerians have experienced in the past few weeks. How do they recoup their losses? What happens if the federal government decides not to obey this ruling, as it has happened in some other cases? I'd like your thoughts on this, uh, on the outcome of the, on, on the Supreme Court ruling really on the Naira redesign issue. Let me make a point clear. The Supreme Court actually did not nullify the entire uh, Naira redesignation. It upheld that, yes, 
You have the power to do the redesignation, to introduce new color, new notes. But the old notes must continue to be legate in the anti the third phase of December. I don't see the difficulties the federal government or anybody will try to create in complying with the law. And after all, this country is based on law. I don't see where my successor will say, no, I do not differ. The judgment appears to be a win-win situation. A win-win situation on the side of federal government, allowing them the, to exercise their power to change the colors of the Naira. And win-win situation on the side of the people who are suffering so much. Mind you, Supreme Court judges operate within the system. And under jurisprudence, they can be influenced by what they saw happen. What is happening in the country is what is public knowledge. They are not from the moon. And they have to look at the law in such a way. It's a, Supreme Court is a court of law and a court of policy. If a policy is such that it creates an injustice, you can remind you the fundamental human rights of the human beings are embedded. If government in, in, creates a policy, and that policy is calculated to erode fundamental human rights of individuals, Supreme Court has a right to intervene. And I think there's justification. I don't see any reason why anybody, the federal government, will say I will not comply. If federal government in its wisdom say I will not comply with judgment of the first Court, then it's an invitation to anarchy. And I don't think this government is lawless. My successor in the office is not a lawless person. I think he will do the right thing. And I don't think CBN itself was fighting a personal issue. Even if you say, you don't see where they can say no, Supreme Court has spoken. Because the moment this country will do not obey the judgment of the Supreme Court, then the, the obvious thing is anarchy. And nobody will want to stay in a country that does not obey his Supreme Court. I don't even have that dream that Supreme Court, it will be ignored. Well, because I'm the end effect of the judgment has not affected the federal government adversely. The Supreme Court said, go ahead and do your new currency, but allow the old one. This is the summary of the judgment. Allow the old one to go parapersu with the, 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 the old notes and until 20 to give people sufficient time. By 31st of December 2023, the old notes cease to be legal tender. I don't see any difficulties in that. Well, unfortunately, uh, we see situations of semi-anarchy in which uh, the Supreme Court uh, rulings have not been obeyed. But uh, we only have a short amount of time, and I have two really quick questions for you. First of all, is it possible for an individual or an a company, an entity, who has uh, suffered undue hardship due to the Naira redesign back and forth, is it possible for them to sue the Central Bank of Nigeria? Is that in order to get justice? And how likely would it be that their case would be heard? Second of all, well, um, second is back to the um, to BVAS and uh, actually to the federal capital territory, whether or not it's considered a state. In your recollection, have you? Had a, do you remember ever having a president, a Nigerian president, who did not win the federal capital territory and still became president? In your recollection, I am not. I'm afraid the issue of 25 percent does not allude to the fact that there must be an outright winning of the federal capital territory. And I, my own understanding is that the person must also get 25 percent in the federal capital territory. Right. But come back to the other issue you, 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 you asked, which you can recollect me. You talked about the... CBN. Uh, the other issue, can you... Yes, just about an me? individual or entity who that? have suffered undue hardship, whether or not it's even sensible to what, sue what, the CBN. A, yes, you, there's a protection, public officers' protection, and there's presumption of regularity when public officers are carrying things in honest. And in this case, the Supreme Court did not say the currency, the change of currency was wrong. The Supreme Court didn't say so. The Supreme Court only extended the window to use our old notes. 
So I don't see where you can bring a claim and then be able to get anything. I don't think it will be possible for somebody to, or company to go and file an action that I lost. I don't think so. All right, fair enough. Mind you, before even then, Supreme Court came in. The issue of whether there was a disobedience is another matter which has not been officially, no proceedings have been commenced in that. Therefore, it's alluded to the fact that Supreme Court has come in to be on the side of the people in this matter. At the same time, Supreme Court has come in to uphold the rights of the federal government to change the currency. So I don't see how you can bring an action and succeed. I'm afraid you cannot. Former Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Michael Aondoka, thank you so much for joining us.